We are pain, that's all. We are God in our history. Yo guys! I'm Yurizi. Here's part 9 of what if Naruto studied Fuinjutsu. While exploring the Team 7 training ground, a young Naruto happens to stumble across a strangely shaped kunai embedded in a tree. Years of frustration and deciphering later, he finally cracks the Fuinjutsu formula hidden along the handle to surprising and painful results. At the same time, a ghost of the Atsutsuki sets in motion a plan to end his family's eternal conflict. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and check the author in the description. Let's start. Chapter 35, Just Two, Shirtless Guys. Everyone flinched at the sound of cracking bones and an ear-piercing scream, which echoed through the woods. Naruto felt his stomach churn and his eyes soften at the sight before him. This was just getting morbid. Naruto was pissed at the sound team, but even he knew this was excessive. It couldn't even be considered a fight anymore. Sasuke was just toying with the guy, like a cat batting around an injured mouse. Sasuke, that's enough. He's no longer a threat. You can stop now, he said, placing hand on the boy's shoulder. Sasuke whirled around and smacked him right in the face, harder than he had ever punched him before. Naruto reeled back from the blow and Sasuke slammed his hand into his throat, cutting off his vocal cords. The boy gasped in pain and reached for his neck, before Sasuke grabbed hold of his arms. Come on, Dobe. I thought you'd be better than this, Sasuke smirked as he twisted the blonde's hands behind his back and kicked him forward. Naruto stumbled forward before falling to his knees, gasping for breath. Hinata quickly jumped in front of him, her eyes pleading for Sasuke to stand down. As he tried to get his breath under control, he shot Sasuke a dark look, which only caused the other boy to sneer. The Uchiha usually held himself in a very composed manner. Right now, his stance was slanted and his head cocked to the side made him seem unhinged. His manic appearance was only accented by the twisting, dark markings across his skin. Naruto kun, it's that seal. It's seeping chakra throughout his body, especially his head. Naruto pushed off of his knees and stood up, his mind racing a mile a minute. Enko had told him plenty of times what that seal could do. That thing was seeping that snake bastard's chakra straight into Sasuke's mind, influencing him to be harsher crueler, but now that it was done altering Sasuke's system, he could actually do something about it. He needed to shut off the flow as soon as possible. The longer that chakra lingered in Sasuke's brain, the more it would start to twist his mind. He gave a nod and the mass of the clones throughout the trees dove down on the crazed genin. Sasuke only smiled at the sight, as the first clones started rushing him. His red eyes flashed as he ducked under the first punch, grabbed hold of the clone's arm, and twisted before throwing him back towards two approaching clones, dispelling them on contact. He twisted around and slapped the two incoming punches away with ease, before kicking out the legs of one clone and landing a solid punch to the jaw of the other. Naruto flinched as he watched Sasuke tear through the clones with beastly precision. His movements weren't exactly feral, but they emanated a ferocity he had never seen from his friend. Sasuke slammed the latest clone to the ground and twisted its arm, forcing it to dispel. He quickly began racing through hand signs and shot a giant, purple ball of fire into the crowd of clones. He gazed through the resulting explosion and giant puff of smoke that emanated from the destroyed clones. Through the purple haze that was fogging his mind, he grinned. This was more like it. The thrill of a challenge. Pushing him and his eyes to the limit. He didn't know what this chakra was, but it was exhilarating. He felt like he could do anything. His Sharingan caught movement in the corner of his eye, and he quickly twisted around and caught Hinata's strike. She pumped her chakra through his hand and tapped her fingers along his arm, but she was shocked to see that the Jukin was having little effect on his system. The purple chakra from the seal simply forced open the closed Tenketsu and absorbed any of her lingering chakra. Sasuke snarled and was about to backhand her away, but froze. Something inside his mind seemed to click as he stared into her eyes. Her face was flushed with concern, and her gaze held no trace of animosity. His short pause was all she needed to grab hold of his other hand and lock his arms across his chest. Naruto shot out from the crowd of clones, his fingers burning with gold flames. He slammed his fingers into Sasuke's shoulder, shouting, for pronged seal. Sasuke's eyes shot wide open as the markings along his body flashed red. 
He fell to his knees as the markings shifted from red to white and slowly began fading away from his skin. It was like being dunked in a bucket of cold water. The feel of grime and haziness disappeared in an instant. What the hell just happened? He panted as Hinata cautiously let go of his arms, which fell to the ground by his sides. Your demonic hickey just sent you on a berserker rampage. Are you feeling alright? Naruto replied. Sasuke simply nodded as he wiped away the sweat that was accumulating on his forehead. Good, Naruto replied before smashing his fist into Sasuke's cheek. That's for that sucker punch, you asshole. Sasuke didn't respond as he spit out a speck of blood. His mind wasn't exactly clear, but even he had to admit he had that coming. Hinata sent Naruto a disapproving glare, before checking Sasuke's system again to make sure none of the seal's chakra was lingering in his system. Naruto took the moment to step back and glance around the clearing. Sure enough, the sound team had decided to split. He eyed the girl's jacket lying on the floor, which she must have ditched to escape the gravity seal. Good riddance. Dobe, what did you do to stop me, and what the hell is this thing on my neck? Sasuke asked as Hinata helped him up. He was surprised by Naruto's somber look as he turned towards him. He could tell he wasn't going to like this. Naruto sighed as he pointed towards him. That thing on your neck is an odd-numbered seal. I made a temporary fix by blocking the seal with an even-numbered seal on top of it. That will disrupt the flow of chakra, at least for a while, until I can make a better replacement. As for what exactly it is, that, is the evil curse seal. So much for subtly, Sasuke murmured as he rubbed the spot on his neck. That thing is no joke, Sasuke, Naruto cut in. It's dangerous. It's, he said before growling and turning away. He ran a hand through his hair, as he clenched his teeth. Just spit it out and tell me already, Sasuke called, already sure he wasn't going to like the answer. I, I don't know how to get rid of it okay. Naruto cried out as he turned around. I just don't. That's fine. We'll just get someone who. No, Sasuke. You don't understand. No one knows how to remove it. Not Jiraiya Sensei, not even Gigi. He felt as if he had been slapped in the face. Not even the Hokage or the village's seal master knew how to remove this thing. Just what the hell was it? Hinata glanced back and forth between the two, unsure what she could do in this situation. Sasuke Kuen, we'll. We'll deal with it later, he cut her off as he pushed off her shoulder and steadied himself. Sasuke Kuen, you need to rest. We don't know exactly what. Let's just get out here and get to the tower. At least there I can get some answers in peace. But Sasuke K. No! Hinata was about to speak up, but kept her comment to herself. She slightly scowled at him, but nodded in understanding. Sasuke turned to Naruto and asked, Your clones still have the scrolls correct? The ones you didn't turn to smoke, yes, he replied curtly as two hidden clones jumped down from the trees. One handed the scroll to Naruto, while the other offered it to Sasuke, who shook his head. He glanced to Hinata and said, Give it to her. I'm in no condition to protect it. She didn't openly acknowledge his gesture, but her scowl did soften ever so slightly. Sasuke internally sighed as he tried to hold himself up. He was on shaky ground here and he knew it. His anger had gotten the better of him, and he had lashed out. Again. Things just could never go smoothly. He turned to Naruto and said, you're leading. Let's just get the hell out of this forest. The Hokage wanted to sigh, but he was noticing this was becoming a pattern for this team. Things were just growing more somber and somber every time they stood in front of him. They were in the makeshift control center on the top floor of the tower. As soon as Team 7 had arrived, Irika had shuffled them straight to the Hokage's temporary accommodations. Hinata stood next to Kakashi and Enko was hovering over Naruto's shoulder with a grim look on her face. Her own interaction with the Sanin had left her a little shaken, and the cuts and bruises along her body made it easy to understand why. Sasuke stood shirtless with his back to the professor, facing his teammates. He simply glared at the ground and refused to meet their gaze. The Sandame could literally feel the tension in the air. His teammates were a little bitter, but he could still see the traces of absolute concern clearly across their faces. They would overcome this. All friendships had their hurdles, but overcoming them was what strengthened them indefinitely. Turning back to the matter at hand, he scowled as he ran a wrinkly finger across the dark tattoo etched on the boy's neck. Even now, others were still paying for his mistake. He had allowed Orochimaru to get this far, and here was another example of others suffering the consequences. 
He patted the boy on the shoulder and told him he could put his shirt back on. He glanced over to Naruto and asked, And what do you make of this? Naruto would usually be humbled for being asked his professional opinion on a few injutsu matter, but he was still a little somber. I haven't gotten to take a in-depth look at it, but I'd probably guess that Orochimaru team has made some adjustments since the sea life scene. Anko raised her arm to her own shoulder and scowled. I can start placing my version of the curse suppression seal as soon as I got the space. I just need a room cleared out and some privacy for a few hours. After that, he'll be as good as he's going to be. The Hokage took out his pipe and took a few puffs before responding. He needed to take the edge off. I take it you still haven't made much progress on your other example, then? Naruto glanced behind him and Enko gave him a nod. It's okay to tell them. He needs to know he's not he only one. Naruto nodded and replied, I'm still working on finding a way to remove Nechan's seal. That thing is just so damn packed with code that it's hard to get to the center of it all. Orochimaru is no seal master, but he's certainly done his homework in the art. As much as it pisses me off to say it, Sasuke getting marked could actually help me find something new. If I can find the base pattern between the two, deep within the seal, then maybe I can find a new lead for removing it. Good. When the second exam is over, I'll have you meet up with Jiraiya again to compare notes about the seal. You two have had the most experience examining the seal, and an extra pair of eyes will be better for the both of you. As for right now, you all deserve a good night's sleep. Tomorrow we'll deal with suppressing Sasuke's seal. I'll have the space readied for you. I want you and Sasuke to meet with Kakashi on the fourth floor at noon. You will have all the privacy you will need. You are lucky. The second test will not end for another two days, so most teams have not arrived at the tower yet. Anko, please show them to their rooms. Kakashi and I need to have a word. Anko nodded and herded the quiet team out the door. Silence settled over the office as the two men simply stared off into the distance. It's not your fault Kakashi. You prepared them as best you could. I know, but that doesn't make it any less frustrating. The fact that they faced down a Sanin and lived is miraculous enough. This could have been much, much worse. Thankfully, Naruto Koen was able to save Hinata from a similar fate. The Hokage glanced out the window of the tower and gazed out over the forest. Those three will persevere. They care so much for one another, even if they are in a rough patch right now. So much for the positive team building they had been doing lately, Kakashi sighed as he rubbed his neck. They had grown even closer after returning from Wave, and their C-ranked missions only strengthened that bond. It's disturbing to see them this silent towards each other. It will pass. Sasuke Kuen is rather lucky. The one person, who has the best chance for discovering the way to remove the cursed seal, happens to be one of his closest friends. You and I both know that once Naruto has become attached to someone, it is very hard to break that bond. Something as trivial as this won't break that connection. This development will only spur him even harder to unravel the secrets of my former student's seal. Besides, I believe the problem between the two will be healed tomorrow during their time alone in the room. Really now? That fast? Well, not completely. Those boys are just too stubborn to simply resolve their differences through words alone. Action is their true language, and I unfortunately believe that a clash between them is the only way for them to fully resolve their issues. Or it could make it worse, Kakashi sighed as the headache already started to form. That's true, but those two share a bond deeper than a simple rivalry. Did I ever tell you about the time I caught them cheating at the academy? Oh, this should be good, Kakashi chuckled as he attempted to let the stress of the current situation momentarily slip away from him. I had finished my paperwork for the week, and had an unusual amount of free time on my hands. After sitting in that office for 17 hours straight, I decided to take the time to walk around the village. I was passing by the academy and decided to drop in and surprise the younger classes. I was standing outside a classroom door, but I paused as the sight through the window made my day. It seems little Sasuke Kuen had grown rather bored during one class and decided to doze off. He ended up doing poorly on a quiz and he seemed very afraid of invoking his mother's wrath for something as silly as laziness. As you would expect, Naruto Kuen did not fare well on the quiz either. As the teacher walked around collecting the quizzes, Naruto picked pocketed the teacher's keys to his cabinet. Without saying a word, he silently tossed them to Sasuke, who hid them from sight. The Hokage chuckled and coughed as some of his smoke got caught in his lung. Of course, the teacher blamed Naruto and dragged him off to the principal's office during the lunch break. 
As I watched the children playing outside, I noticed Sasuke was absent from his peers. I walked back inside and glanced in to discover Sasuke unlocking the cabinet for blank test forms. He made two new tests copying off of sweet little Sakurachan's paper before replacing the new ones with the others. And he just made another one for Naruto. They didn't like each other back then. Hell, they can barely tolerate each other now. The innocence of a child is bittersweet, Kakashi, but even so, their ability to communicate without speaking astonished me to no end. Besides being the technical rookie of the year and dead last, it was another part of my consideration when I paired the two together on your team. Kakashi nodded as he felt his mind wander back to similar events that he had ignored at the time, but now started to bug him. Hinata had told him how the two had sprung up with a plan to subdue the Zaofu clansmen with only a few short words. It had been impressive, but now things were starting to get strange. It was happening far too often for a pair that bickered as much as they did. There was that time during their training with his Nin Ken. That time during the wave mission, when they freed him from Zabaza's trap. When they were trapped in the Dome of Ice. Time and time again, the two demonstrated an innate ability to just read each other perfectly. A little too perfectly. Kakshi scowled as just another thing was added to the pile of mysteries that surrounded his genin. First the Hyuga Ring, and now this. Kakashi did not like being out of the loop. As an ANBU, information was key. It could make the difference between life and death, which was a constant for that profession. Not knowing something made him feel uncomfortable, and this was something that was hitting a little too close to home. Something wrong Kakashi. Shaken out of his stupor, Kakashi sent him a little wave. Nah, nah. I'm fine. Just lost in thought. Well, I know this has been a stressful day for you as well. Go and reassure them. They'll appreciate it. Thank you Hokage-sama, he said as he bowed before exiting the room. The next day. And here we are boys, Kakashi said as he swung open the door. The two peered into the room swallowed in darkness. True to his word, the Hokage had indeed made sure that everything was cleared. The desks, the beds, even the wallpapers. Thankfully there was no window, which made it a perfect, concrete cube. This should do perfectly. Thanks Kakashi-sensei. No prob. I'll be standing out here, making sure no one interrupts. I'll be sure to place a silencing seal as well. Thank you, Naruto said as he lit one of the candles in his hands, before walking in. Sasuke quietly shuffled behind him, and felt a chill rise through his spine as the door snapped shut behind him. Naruto said nothing as he went around the room, placing the candles across the ground in a ring. He settled in the center of the candles, and reached into his tool pouch. He began setting several bottles of ink and brushes on the ground in a neat order. Sasuke could only watch in silence, as the blonde got to work. He didn't really know what to say. Things were slightly tense between the two right now. He was the one at fault here and he knew it, but even so, it was not like he could have helped it. That crazed man's chakra had been manipulating his mind. Influencing him to lash out at his teammates. He felt his body tense up as that uncomfortable feeling washed over him again. Using the term influence was what was making him so guilty. It wasn't like he had been mind controlled. All of his actions had come from within. His own secret desires to match up against the blonde and really let loose. It wasn't like he wanted to pummel the blonde, but he really did want to see how he truly compared to his teammate. It was just that allure from the chakra, that pull from the seal that even acted on him now. Was he really that weak willed that the simple promise of power would change him that much? Was he really? Sasuke's entire train of thought fell apart, when he finally noticed what Naruto was doing. What the hell, Dobe? What? I don't want the ink staining my clothes, he replied as he walked over towards the door, wearing only his boxers. He folded his pants, shirt, and jacket and left them in a pile, before turning back to Sasuke. You're going to need to change too. Despite being alone, Sasuke felt his cheeks burn up in embarrassment. Is that why you brought the candles? To set the mood? Sorry to disappoint, but I don't swing that way. Hardy har. Could have fooled me. Seeing how many girls you've rejected over the years has certainly raised some questions. Sasuke simply sent him a fierce glare, which the other boy shrugged off. Stop being such a baby. We've been in nothing but swimsuits with each other, and you were fine with that. It's basically the same thing. Besides, I need the access to your skin. You are going to serve as the surface for this seal. Sasuke clenched his teeth, but started removing his clothing anyway. 
As he folded his clothes next to the doorway, Naruto headed back to center of the room and began unraveling a scroll. All right, I'm going to need you to sit right here, Naruto curtly said, pointing to the center of the room. As Sasuke settled into place, Naruto began drawing a wide circle around the two of them. You'd better get comfortable because we are going to be here a while. Try to move as little as possible. Seals can be finicky, and what I'm about to do is going to be rather complicated. Can you walk me through it? Sasuke asked as he shifted into the lotus position. Sure, he replied as he dipped his brush into a bottle of ink and held it above his back. Now this might be a little cold, but try not to move. Sasuke nodded and tried his best not to flinch as the brush came in contact with his skin. What I'm doing is preparing the outline to connect with the circle around you, which will connect to the walls. Because, let me finish. This version of the seal I developed is really complicated and incredibly long. It's honestly the largest seal I've ever developed. Lift your arm, please. Naruto ran his brush along Sasuke's ribcage, down his leg, and into the floor, where it went out to connect with the ring. As I was saying, a lot of seals have parts hidden within other kanji. They fold in on each other once the seal has been activated. During the creation process, I need a lot of space to draw all of the seals necessary. They are going to stretch along the walls, and maybe the ceiling if I run out of space. At the end of it all, all of the seals are going to connect with each other and recede into a figure around the cursed seal. What's it going to do? It's going to actively suppress all attempts from the seal from influencing you to use its power. The problem with the older version was that its effectiveness weakened when the subject was placed under stress or anger. My seal corrects that problem. However, I can't shut out the seal entirely. Until I find a way to remove it, the option to use it will always be there in your mind. You can willingly choose to use it, but every time you do, more and more of that bastard's chakra will seep into your brain and begin to affect you even when you aren't using the seal. Sasuke simply nodded in silence, as the blonde boy got to work. Over an hour passed before either of them would speak again. Naruto was currently off to Sasuke's right, transcribing on the wall, when Sasuke spoke up. Thank you for doing this. Naruto glanced back at him. The boy still sat frozen still, with his head facing the ground. He turned back to his work and replied. It's no problem. It's the least I can do for my teammate. He was quiet for a minute before he stopped his brush. You may be insufferable at times, but you're still my friend. I'm not just going to sit by and let some perverted old man get away with assaulting you. He heard a chuckle behind him. Can we not refer to it that way? We could, Naruto replied as he dipped his brush into the ink and made a giant arc across the wall, extending over his head, but it wouldn't be as entertaining. I think adding a little humor to the situation will help lighten the mood. Sasuke was silent for another minute before he responded again. I'm, sorry for how I lashed out at you in the forest. Naruto paused his stroke, but kept his back to him. I was just so overwhelmed. The power, the rush. I just got lost in it, and then you showed up. And your first instinct was to smack me in the face? Naruto asked, as he turned around. No. Well, I guess yes, but... Why? His interruption surprised Sasuke, and he turned to look him in the eyes. Why would your first instinct be to attack me? I'm pretty sure I was lashing out at everyone. Not Hinata-chan. You took one look at her and froze. You didn't seem to want to attack her, he replied in a curt tone as he gaze started to sharpen. Sasuke was surprised by this realization. Maybe it was just that she had always served as the mediator between the two. She was never one to push violence, but instead acted as the voice of reason. He would always be the first to defend her ability as a kunoichi, but, even in his subconscious, he never pictured her as a fighter. She was always the middle ground that served to balance the two of them. As he bounced these ideas in his head, he also noted the sharp, steel tone Naruto had when regarding Hinata. He shook these thoughts out of his head, as he glanced back at him. I can understand why you lashed out at the sound guy because he attacked you, but you lashed out at me at first sight. I want to know why. Sasuke was silent as he tossed the question around in his mind. I guess it was because, that deep down, I want to see how much I measure up to you. This answer caught Naruto off guard. He sent him a confused look as Sasuke continued, Ever since the academy I've noticed that you aren't as stupid as you can let on. Due to your proficiency in seals, I knew that you held some untapped potential that was ignored by the teachers. After all of these years of seeing you being pushed back because of prejudices, I have finally gotten to see how you could grow under a productive teacher. Seeing you advance at such a rapid rate made me a little jealous. Even if you had been faster, 
I had always been a step ahead of you in the academy. As you've bounded forward, I've felt myself begin to be left in the dust. So, I guess I've wanted to see where we stand from one another. Both the boys were silent as they stared at one another. After a few seconds, Naruto started to chuckle before letting out a weak laugh. Sasuke started to scowl, but was surprised when Naruto shot him one of the most relaxed smiles he'd ever seen from the boy. Honestly Sasuke. I've always measured myself up to you. You're a natural genius and everything comes just so easy for you. I guess I've been jealous as well, but that's why I work so hard. I always wanted to be like you in the academy, so I'd work day after day trying to catch up. Even though the more prideful part of me hurts to say it, I still don't think I measure up to you in my mind's eye. He sent Sasuke a fierce grin as he walked up and squatted next to him. So I guess I want to see how we measure up too. Both boys smirked as a pleasant silence settled over them. Sasuke scoffed as he resisted the temptation to scratch an itch under a section of ink. Look at us. Hinata would be so proud. Talking about feelings and such. I know. It's making me sick, Naruto replied as he pretended to hold in a barf. Before he turned around and headed back towards the wall, he said, you should probably apologize to Hinata as well. I know, and I will. However, I can't until we're finished with this stupid room. How much longer will this take anyway? Oh, I don't know, Naruto mused as he gazed around the room. Probably about, two hours. Sasuke groaned as he settled back into his motionless stance, as Naruto chuckled and continued his work along the walls. His legs were starting to cramp again and he didn't know how much of this he could take. A and, we, are, done. Naruto smiled and carefully lifted the paintbrush away from Sasuke's neck and admired his work. Overall, it had taken him four hours to complete the seal. He had decided to take it slow and make sure everything was perfect before signing the final mark, which had taken up 30 minutes of time. He walked over to the door and reached into his kunai pouch. After taking out a kunai, he jogged back over and offered him the handle. Now, this next part is going to really, re really hurt. So you'd better start preparing yourself. How bad are we talking here? Sasuke asked as Naruto walked back behind him. To put it in perspective, it's going to feel like a hot iron press is being rammed into your shoulder. It is going to sting and burn like crazy, but the moment the process is over, the pain will vanish. Now, how long it will take will depend on how painful you want it to be. Care to elaborate? The faster I have the seal recede into its shrunken form, the more painful it will be. The slower I compress it, the less pain you will feel. Which do you suggest? Sasuke asked as he gripped the handle. Honestly? Treat it like a band-aid, and just get it over with. When I applied it to Nichan, we first opted for the slower option, but it was too slow and the pain was still harsh. It would have taken us just as long to compress the seal as it took to apply it, if we worked at the minimal pain threshold. Fine. Then just do it as fast as you can and get it over with, Sasuke replied as he stuck the kanai's leather handle between his teeth. All right. Now this process is going to take about two minutes, and it is going to be agonizing the entire time. No matter what happens, try your best not to move. The seal link may already be set up, but I don't want you to smudge some of the kanji during the process. You ready? Sasuke gave him a nod, before he clenched his eyes closed and bit into the handle. Naruto took a deep breath and began going through hand signs. After 21 signs, he paused and placed his thumb in the center of the curse seal. He patted Sasuke on the other shoulder and said, Evil curse suppression, activate. Sasuke's eyes shot open as the searing pain raced across his body. He screamed into the metal as the black writings all along the room raced along the walls, speeding up his body and onto his shoulder. The dobe hadn't been kidding when he said this was going to be painful. Suppressing the damn seal was just as painful, if not worse than getting the damn thing put on. For two grueling minutes, he fought back tears as the strings of kanji wrapped around his body and formed a ring around the cursed seal. Finally, after a bright flash of white, the searing pain disappeared and he slumped forwards onto his hands. He spit out the kanai from his mouth as he took deep breaths. Hold on. I gotta check and make sure everything went alright, Naruto said as he lifted a candle over the boy's back and inspected his handiwork. Sasuke yelped as a drop of melted wax fell onto his back. Watch it. Sorry. Sorry. Naruto said as he held his hand under the candle, as he glanced over the twisting ring around the cursed seal. He couldn't help but feel an iota of pride swell up inside him as he gazed at his work. Good news, team. You are now your own man. 
No demonic hickeys will be influencing your mind. I thought we agreed to not refer to it as that, he chuckled. No, you proposed we don't refer to it as that. I ignored you, he replied as he helped Sasuke to his feet. Come on, let's go show Kakashi-sensei. Naruto helped Sasuke steady himself on his feet, before the pair headed off towards the door. As they cracked it open, they both groaned and shielded their eyes as light burned their unprepared retinas. After blinking several times and adjusting to the light, they recognized the forms of Hinata and Kakashi staring at them. Well? Kakashi asked. Naruto gave him a cheeky smile, and spun Sasuke around. See for yourself. Kakashi smiled as he gazed down at the design. Sure enough, things seemed to have gone off without a hitch. Hinata had been incredibly worried during the whole affair, and had not stopped pacing in front of the door for the entire process. Kakashi had told her several times that it would take hours for them to finish, but she had been adamant to stay and see the results. As soon as the door opened and she noticed the smiles on their faces, her heart lit up with joy. Then she noticed the rest of them and her heart stopped. Hinata-chan, are you alright? You look overheated, Naruto commented as he stared at the beet red girl. Steam almost seemed to be coming out of her ears, due to the almost naked boys in front of her. She's fine. I think she's just surprised by the show you're giving her, Kakashi chuckled as he steadied her back in case she fainted again. She had gotten rather good at stopping herself, but there were always a few times that fell between the cracks. What are you talking about? Sasuke asked as he rubbed his sore shoulder. Kakashi just gazed them a glance up and down, causing them to realize their lack of attire. The two turned red as well, and bolted back into the room to preserve what little dignity they had left. Chapter 36, The Preliminaries, Part 1 Now, if there is anyone present who would wish to resign from the preliminaries, this would be the time to do so. Naruto twisted his head around and gazed at the collection of teams that had also managed to make it to the tower. Anko Nichin hadn't been kidding. The Forest of Death had certainly lived up to its reputation. Overall, only nine teams had been able to push through the forest and acquire both scrolls. The presence of Team Guy didn't surprise him in the least. Based on what Sasuke and Hinata had told him about Lee and Niji, it had probably been a breeze for them to reach the tower after they had stolen their scroll. His stare lingered on Niji long enough for the two to share a short glaring contest, and he was sure to give the sound team the same treatment. He noted one of the two teams from Waterfall had managed to make it, if only by the skin of their teeth if their torn attire was any indicator. The Kimo team he had offered to help was also present, but their third teammate was suspiciously missing. He noted that Kabuto's team was also missing a member. His gaze lingered over the team from Suna, but he quickly looked away as he felt the red-haired boy from the forest notice his stare. What truly surprised him was that all three of the rookie teams had somehow managed to make it. He didn't know if their training was anywhere near the level that his team had gone through, but he was anxious to see the results nonetheless. Last chance. The Hokage mused as he stared into each of the faces of the genin, looking for any crack in resolve. After another minute of silence, he smiled and nodded towards Hayate. All right then, let's get this show on the road. Hey, droned, direct your attention to the video board as we randomly generate the matchups. Naruto felt a familiar excitement rise up in his chest at the thought of fighting in front of so many people for the purpose of creeping closer to his ultimate goal. So he felt disappointed when neither of the two names on the screen was his. Sasuke Achiha vs. Yoroi Akado. Sasuke felt his chest swirling with excitement, and Hei began directing everyone else up the stairs towards the balcony. Alright team. Don't you dare lose on me. I'm expecting to see you in the finals. Naruto said as he shot him a grin. The same goes for you Dobe. Nobody gets to beat you but me, he replied with a smirk of his own. Now, now boys. Save it for later. Best of luck, Sasuke-kun. We'll be cheering for you, Hinata cheered and the two of them began making their way towards the stairs. Kakashi chose to linger and waited until the two were out of earshot before whispering, have you had any problems? None so far. He replied as he rubbed his shoulder, Hinata and Naruto sparred with me a little earlier and nothing seemed out of the ordinary. I guess we'll just have to wait and see how well the dobe seal holds up. Kakashi nodded and gave him one last thumbs up, before lazily making his own way towards the balcony. Sasuke gave the retreating form of his team one last look before turning to face his bespectacled opponent. Besides the bruises he had received from his encounter from the Sanin, he honestly felt great. The spot on his shoulder where the seal was felt incredibly sore, but other than that he was raring to go. Whatever the dobe had done, it was working wonders. 
The feelings of nausea and grime he had felt during his first day after being marked were almost completely gone. He cracked his neck and dropped into his stance as he stared down his opponent. Hei nodded at both the genin and raised his hand to signal them to start. Sasuke smirked as his eyes flashed red, and he shot off towards his opponent. Well that was a little disappointing, Naruto murmured as he leaned against the rail. He stared down at the unconscious form of Sasuke's opponent, and sighed as Sasuke was declared the winner. The match had taken less than four minutes, two of which were spent by the other guy shouting off some exposition about his jutsu. Without the curse seal holding him back, Sasuke had torn the guy apart in taijutsu, and Yoroi's peculiar ability to drain chakra barely even faced him. He had plenty of experience with that by sparring with Hinata. The guy was certainly above average, but then again, so was everyone else in the room. You couldn't have made it more interesting. He whined as Sasuke joined them on the balcony. Not my fault if I'm paired with a weak opponent. I just hope I have better luck in the next round. I actually want this to be interesting. Careful what you wish for, Kakashi mused as they watched Shikamaru and the girl from sound make their way towards the floor. Here's an easy lesson you kids should take to heart, never tempt fate. She tends to be stingy. As the match got underway, Naruto leaned in towards Sasuke and whispered, how did the seal do? It didn't look like there were any problems. None whatsoever. Turns out you can do something when you put your mind to it. Naruto smirked and they both turned their attention back to the fight below them. The next few matches seemed to fly by. Team 7 had collectively flinched at the sight of Zaku blowing his arms apart, and all three were shocked by Tamari's brutal defeat of the girl from Team Guy. That was a bit harsh, Naruto said as he watched the paramedics whisk Ten Ten off of the floor. He unconsciously rubbed his lower back as he imagined how rough that final landing must have been. Indeed, Guy mused behind him, but this should serve as an important lesson for her. She may not become a chunin today, but what she will have learned will be just as important. Better for her to discover this weakness now, rather than out in the field of battle. Guy sensei I will be sure to fight twice as hard. When the matches are over, we will be proud to tell her that Niji and I have moved on to the finals. She will be with us in fighting spirit. Lee boomed as he gave Guy a salute. Well said, Lee. Guy boomed with a smile, now all of you should pay close attention. This next match is going to be quite interesting. Surprised by his change in tone, Team 7 and Lee turned their attention back to the floor as the genin from Waterfall and Kumo stood across from each other. Alright, now are you two ready? Hey, coughed out, glancing between the two. All set. The boy from Waterfall exclaimed as he stretched his right arm across his chest. The white-haired boy from Kumo simply nodded from behind his grey scarf. All right then. Begin. Hei drawled out as he brought his hand down. There was a flash of light and a loud crack filled the room. Dust filled the air and the observers could only look on, dumbfounded, at the new sight before them. The Kumonin was now where his opponent had stood, with his fist outstretched. Across the room was the unconscious form of the waterfall genin, embedded deep within the concrete wall. Sasuke could only stutter as he tried to comprehend what they had just seen. What, what the hell was that? Well, isn't that interesting? Kakashi murmured, drawing his attention. Sasuke turned and was thankful to see that Hinata looked just as lost as he was. What did surprise him was the similar look on Lee, Naruto, and Niji's faces. Did you catch that too? Naruto murmured to Lee. Just barely, Lee somberly replied. That's insane, Naruto muttered as he watched the medical staff attempt to pry the waterfall genin from the wall. Care to explain what the hell just happened dope? Well, he hit him, he replied bluntly. Gee thanks. Could you be a little more specific? That guy, was just ridiculously fast, was his only response. But there was something else too, Niji finally chimed in. Agreed. Did you see what he did with his chakra? Naruto asked, temporarily forgetting his strife with the older genin. He was spreading it all over his body. It was barely there for a second, but his chakra system flashed from blue to white. Fed up with their cryptic discussion, Sasuke leaned towards Hinata. Would you care to explain? I'm sorry, Sasuke-kun, but I didn't have my Byakugan activated. I didn't witness what Nijinizan saw. Sasuke cursed himself for his stupidity as a realization swept over him. He should have been using his Sharingan. Not only could he have seen what was going on, but he also could have potentially copied whatever technique the boy had just used. He glared across room to the other balcony as the Kumonin leaned back against the wall. The spiky-haired Genin closed his eyes as his more talkative teammate yammered on and on beside him. 
That EHL guy is something else, Naruto murmured, gaining several grunts of agreement. They were shaken from their stupor by the ringing of the monitor board, as the names once again began to spin. Come on. Please, 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 please. Naruto whined as the yellow lights flashed through the names of the remaining combatants. Patience Naruto. You'll have your turn, Kakashi chuckled placing a hand on head. I know sensei, but I'm just so excited. Oh. Who is it going to be? Hinata was wondering the same thing. She held her hands to her chest as she painstakingly watched the numbers act out their roulette. After several agonizing seconds, her eyes widened as her name finally flashed across the board. Hinata Hyuga vs Kabuto Yakushi. Alright Hinata. You're up next. Naruto exclaimed as he slapped her on the back. Why yes, she murmured as she let out a sigh of relief. It felt like a massive weight had been lifted off her shoulders. With the looming presence of her cousin and that red-haired boy from Suna in the room, she had been terrified of who she could have potentially been paired up with. Hinata. Kakashi said, drawing her attention. He placed a hand on her shoulder and offered her one of his patented eye smiles. I have full confidence in you. Go out there and do your best. She smiled up at him as Naruto swung his arm around her shoulder. She's going to kick butt. Now go on down there and try to go easy on him. You got this in the bag. Right team. Sasuke smirked, but gave her an approving nod. She giggled at their antics. They were just too supportive. With a final good luck, she began making her way downstairs. Across the room, Kabuto watched their interaction with mild interest. His eyes swept along the balcony until he locked eyes with a Kanoha Jounin leaning against the wall at the end of the room. The man's toothy smirk and nod drew him back to his conversation before entering the tower. Did you accomplish you objectives, Orochimaru-sama? He asked as his master emerged from the shadows, to varying degrees of success. I was quite pleased with Sasuke Kuen's performance, and I granted him the mark, however, the Hyuga was able to escape without my gift. Really? I'm surprised a Jenin was able to escape from you. It appears that entire team is full of surprises, he chuckled as the memory of that yellow flash of light echoed in his mind. We might have to keep an eye on the Jinchuriki as well. Make sure that the Uzumaki boy is also being monitored. Consider it done. Are there any other changes to the plan? Yes, actually, Orochimaru replied as he turned to face him, I no longer want you to excuse yourself from the preliminaries. Of course, but why, if I may ask? Despite our interaction in the forest, I didn't get as good a look into Hinata-chan's progress as I would like. Her potential intrigues me to no end, especially if she has truly unlocked the Hyuga's little secret. I will make the necessary adjustments so that you will face her in the preliminaries. As you wish, my lord. Good. Oh, this is getting fun, he cackled as he turned to face towards the tower, just imagine it, Kabuto. Being able to decipher both the Uchiha stone tablet and Hyuga stone ring. The ultimate secrets of the clans directly linked to the sage himself. I'm sure it will prove fruitful, Kabuto chuckled, before I forget, I also met with our contact within the Hyuga before the exams. They had a rather peculiar request. Really now, they were interested if you would allow them to study Sasuke's body after you are forced to switch out of it. She isn't bothered if you keep the eyes, but she offered a new shipment of fresh Byakugan in exchange. Let her know I shall consider it. Also tell her that she is free to access our base along the southern border if he wishes. I know she is getting close with her pet project, and the tools there should help speed things along. If Hinata-chan proves herself in your match, her research could prove valuable. As you wish, Orochimaru-sama. Orochimaru smirked before pausing and gazing off to the east. A sinister grin started plastering itself across his face as a familiar presence entered the range of his senses. It seems they found the bodies. Start heading towards the tower. I will meet you after the matches are complete. I believe it has been too long since my old student and I last had a chat. I wish you the best of luck, Kabuto-san, Hinata bowed before slipping into her Jukin stance. A smile plastered across his face as her returned a small bow of his own. To you as well Hinata-sama. May our match truly push us to our limits. Or at least to yours. Hey 8 gave the signal and Hinata dashed off towards her opponent, striking the first blow against the older Genin. Kabuto definitely beat her in size and in physical strength, but his lankiness made him more open for her short, precise strikes, which Hinata took advantage of in full force. As they exchanged blows, her fingers danced across his skin, 
leaving a trail of red welts in their wake. A tap here, two jabs there, and she finally started to notice his movements growing slower. Good. His right arm should be completely locked up by now, she jumped back to prepare her next kata. She paused and steadied her hands, before diving back towards him. She spun a fake out to his left, before launching a kick towards his right side. She was caught off guard as his hands shot up and caught her kick with ease. He smirked as he tightened his grip and tossed her across the room. She spun in mid-air and crashed onto her knees. She slid to a halt and stared up at the boy, who casually smiled at her, with a hand on his hip. What's going on? The muscles in his arm should have been completely locked up. I'm sorry, Hinata-sama, but you're going to have to do better than that, the boy smiled, adjusting his glasses. She narrowed her eyes as she brought her hands into a hand seal. The Akugan. She cried as the world turned grayscale and the chakra systems of everyone in the room lit up bright blue. She was surprised by the state of his arm, or rather, the lack thereof. It was completely unscathed, as if nothing had even happened. Well, if you won't come to me, I guess I'll have to come to you, he said before launching at her. She blocked his initial kick, and parried away his oncoming jabs and punches as she searched for an opening. She knocked up an incoming blow and lashed out with a quick strike to his chest, only for her palm to be caught in his larger hands. As her chakra flooded his tenketsu, he smiled and raised his other arm and shot his flattened palm towards her chest. Her eyes widened at his sudden increase in speed, but she just managed to catch the strike with her free hand. Immediately, she gasped in pain as she felt the tendons in her hand being torn apart. Tears stung her eyes as she planted her foot on his chest and kicked off of him. Kabuto made no attempt to follow her as she landed a safe distance away. He raised his eyebrows as a green glow he was all too familiar with enveloped her free hand. Oh ho! So you are versed in medical ninjutsu as well? I'm quite impressed Hinata-sama. Our art is a practice that is sadly underutilized in the shinobi world. Your interest in the subject says a lot about your personality and intelligence. You should be commended. Through his speech, she fought back tears as she mended the torn tissue. With her Byakugan, she could make out the distinct shape of the chakra scalpel's jutsu surrounding his hand. What really surprised her was the activity going on in the tenketsu of his right palm. She could literally see it shrinking back to its normal size as the foreign chakra was expelled from the system. How are you doing that? Your body is somehow recovering from the effects of the jukin. Call it a specialty of mine. Due to my vast experience in medical ninjutsu, I have developed a technique that keeps my body in a constant state of alert. Once it detects any damage, it begins healing the injury immediately without needing a thought. Hinata inwardly cursed as she rose back to her feet. She flexed her throbbing hand and started wrapping it in bandages from her bag. As she rolled the bindings around her palm, she quietly studied her opponent. No questions about it. The first thing she had to do was find a way to overcome his healing factor. If she couldn't, any damage she could possibly inflict would be mute. She was tempted to simply use her lion fong technique to drain away at his chakra for his technique certainly had to use up a lot, but her Byakugan revealed that he had the reserves to keep it going for a long time. In fact, it surprised her just how big his reserves actually were. While she was used to seeing monumental amounts of chakra due to being around Naruto, Kabuto's were ridiculously large for a genin. They were almost the size of Kakashi senseis. She grit her teeth as she eyed the razor sharp blade of chakra protruding from his hands. She was also not too keen on getting too close to him again after the revelation of his use of chakra scalpels. It would only take a simply tap or brush against his hands, and her tendons and muscles could be shredded to pieces. While he had yet to truly prove it, for some reason she suspected that he was holding back. Whether it was out of sympathy or contempt, she didn't know, but she could tell that he could probably outspeed her if he really tried. Time to test that healing ability, she thought as she began dash towards him flying through hand signs. When she was within five feet, she cried out, Swayton, pressure stream. Due to the distance between them, it was all Kabuto could do to dive out of the way to evade the raging stream of water. The pencil-thin stream followed his trajectory, and he winced as it slashed above his ribs. She was in on him in a heartbeat, pulling out a kunai, and slashing at his arm. He twisted, managing to reduce the slash into a light cut. In annoyance, he lashed out with a speed greater than she could follow and sliced his invisible blade through her left arm. Hinata cried out in in pain as she landed and jumped back, cradling her arm to her chest. Kabuto tried to hide his growing irritation as his body got to work repairing the damage. It was truly difficult for him to hold himself back to such extents. 
he had to be careful. Under the watchful eye of the Hokage and some of the greatest Jounin Kanoha had ever produced, the tiniest slip-up in performance would arouse some suspicions. Hinata landed on her knees and fought through the pain as she studied the injuries on his arm and chest begin to heal themselves. She noted how the deeper cut on his chest was taking longer than the shallow cut on his arm. It made sense. The greater the injury, the more chakra and time it took to heal it. I need to inflict a major injury. Nothing life-threatening, but enough to push his ability to its limit. If I can manage it, it should slow him down and drain at his chakra. She grit her teeth as her chakra got to work repairing the damage. But it's not like he's just going to let me do that. He's faster than me, and it's even more difficult with his chakra scalpels thrown into the mix. I need something that can give me some kind of edge. The Jukin may slow him down for a couple of seconds before he recovers, but I need something that will last through the match. What should she do sensei? Naruto asked. I'm not sure. That pesky healing ability of his seems to be quite challenging for her to overcome, especially since her technique involves shutting down the body, Kakashi replied. He folded his arms as he glanced down at his male students. This is the danger of battling a medical ninja. Many people dismiss them out of hand due to the connotation of their name, and they end up regretting it. Hot-headed shinobi prefer the flashiness of explosive jutsu, but being able to inflict lacerations to your opponent's muscles and nervous system with just a simple touch is just as, if not, more effective. Including their nasty tendency to heal any injury, whether it is theirs or their comrades, you have a devastating enemy who can swing the tide of any mission. As her jutsu finished its work, Hinata raised her head and caught eyes with the older genin. He was still standing in place, offering her that same, off-putting smile as he adjusted his glasses, which caused her to pause. That's it. Her eyes darted across his body as her plan started to fall into place. He may be able to quickly overcome the Jukin's effect, but it will shut him down for at least a few seconds. Hopefully that will be enough. Kakashi leaned in as he watched his student rise to her feet, a new, steely resolve flaring in her eyes. She's got something. Come on Hinata. Let's see what you've cooked up. She brought her hands together and cried out, Bunshin no Jutsu. Five puffs of smoke erupted next to her and Kabuto was greeted to a line of Hinata scowling at him as they each drew out their kanai. The original reached into her bag and threw down a smoke bomb, enveloping herself and her clones in the purple cloud. Simple illusions are all fun and games, but that level of jutsu is not going to be enough, Hinata-sama. I'm starting to think Orochimaru believes in your ability a bit too much, Kabuto smirked as the wall of clones raced towards him. She's obviously not in the front. The first is always the distraction, which means the true one is either the third or fourth, he thought as he slowly reached for his own kanai. He ignored the first, and glancing behind its shoulder towards the approaching group. He prepared to let the intangible image pass through his body, but winced in astonishment as the muscles along his arm and shoulder began to cramp and tense up. His eyes shot wide open as he stared down into the fierce, Byakugan eyes right in front of him. She tricked me. She actually tricked me, he thought in genuine surprise. He was too slow to recover as she quickly jabbed at his other arm, momentarily disabling it. As his healing factor kicked into effect, she used what little time she had to swipe up with her kanai. Now! While he can't mold his chakra scalpels, coming back to his senses, Kabuto leaned back to evade her attack. As he jerked back, his glasses lifted shortly off of his face. Her eyes narrowed and she twisted her kanai, changing its trajectory. With one swift motion, she cleanly sliced his glasses in half. Kabuto growled as he felt his body fully expel the chakra in his tenketsu. He slashed out at her only to be met with air, as she ducked and darted away. Very clever, Hinata. She knows he's faster and physically stronger than she is, so she decided to impede his sight to give her an advantage. Nicely done, Kakashi thought as he smiled down at his student. I did it. I need to keep up the pressure. She reached into her kunai pouch and threw down three more smoke pellets. Kabuto only smirked as the purple smoke began to surround him. I'm sorry, Hinata-sama, but if you think this little show will give you an advantage then you are surely mistaken. He stood completely still as Hinata disappeared into smoke. He lightly snorted and closed his eyes, losing himself in his other senses. A good shinobi does not just rely on their eyes. Even if yours are far superior than most, it is a weakness to really so heavily on one thing. A shinobi must be able to utilize all of their senses, such as smell or. He whipped around, grabbing Hinata by her throat, and slammed her into the ground, knocking the wind from her lungs. Sound. 
He placed a knee on her chest and held his hand above her face, his chakra scalpels flaring to life. Submit. I would rather not have to make this messy. Hinata squirmed under his weight and thrust something up in his face. It took a second for him to recognize the shape, and when he did, it was too late. His eyes widened as the tags began to glow, making his blood run cold. Exploding tags. He leapt away at his full speed, putting as much distance as he could between the blast radius and himself. As he shot of the smoke and after several seconds, he was surprised and stunned by the lack of an explosion. As it finally sunk in, he began to chuckle as he realized that he had been fooled. That was a very clever use of Genjutsu Hinata-sama. Very well done, he called out. The smoke began to clear away, revealing Hinata on one knee, fighting to regain her breath. She was getting nowhere and she knew it. Even after removing his glasses, it barely slowed him down. She needed to find a way to overload his senses, so she could have a chance to get in and disable his body. Naruto and Sasuke grit their teeth as their hands gripped the handrails. That was too close, Sasuke muttered, she's lucky he fell for her bluff. Come on Hinata. You can do it. Naruto shouted. Kabuto was starting to get bored of this, and decided she needed to start stepping up her game. If Orochimaru-sama was going to invest time into her, she needed to start proving she was far more capable than this. He shot off towards her, forcing her to start weaving through multiple hand signs. She took a deep breath and formed a massive swell of chakra in her gut as she shot off a large water bullet at the ground in front of Kabuto. He leapt through the splash of water, and was on her in seconds. He reared back and kicked at her prone form only to stumble through thin air as the henge faded away. He slid to a stop and turned around just as a kunai flew past his face. His instinct as a shinobi flared in his mind, and he caught a kunai heading straight towards his face by the handle. A sizzling noise caught his attention, and he realized his mistake too late as the tag tied to the kunai lit up. The flashbang went off right in his face causing him to scream as his visual and auditory senses were completely overloaded. Hinata rushed at him with as much energy as she could with her kunai in hand. She slashed numerous times across his chest, dodging out of the way of his flailing arms. He spun around to deliver a kick, which she easily ducked under. She crossed her arms and slashed the kunai across his chest one last time. She let the kunai clatter to the floor as she began pumping chakra into her hands until they were glowing bright blue. 8 trigrams, 64 palm guard. She cried out as the net of sharp chakra slammed into his chest. He cried out as the tiny blades of chakra shred across his skin. As fast as his healing factor was, it was being pushed to its absolute limit as the needle-like threads bombarded his body. She finally halted her rotation and delivered one final hit to his chest, sending him flying across the room into the wall. He slammed into the concrete and fell to the ground as blood seeped from his chest. He growled as he struggled to his feet, but froze as a kunai landed next to his face with a tag attacked by a string. This time that exploding tag is real, Kabuto-san. Please submit. I would rather not make this messy, she cheekily replied, echoing his earlier comment. Kabuto spat out some blood and glanced up at the balcony at his master. He could see the excitement dancing in his eyes, and took his growing smile for his satisfaction. She is lucky Kabuto held himself back to such an extent. I'm sure he won't be as forgiving the next time they cross paths, Orochimaru thought as Kabuto raised his hand to surrender. Kabuto Yakushi has forfeited the match. The winner is Hinata Hyuga, Hei 8 called out, which received a rambunctious applause from Naruto. Way to go Hinata. You did it. He cried as he jumped down and enveloped her in a big hug. Despite the cloud of steam erupting from her ears from embarrassment, a warm feeling of content washed over her body. She had done it. She had made it through the preliminaries. Chapter 37, The Preliminaries, Part 2 Stay down and quit making an embarrassment of yourself, or I'll put you down like the mutt you are. Kiba growled as he fought to get back to his feet. Niji impassively shrugged off Kiba's fierce glare as he towered over Akamaru's prone form. The small puppy whimpered as the Hyuga applied as much pressure as he could without crushing the poor dog. Kiba struggled to stand up straight and clutched his limp arm to his side. He was not going out like this. Not to some stuck-up bastard like him. He coughed into his sleeve as he shakily reached into his pack for another soldier pill. I wouldn't advise that if I were you. Ingesting too many can have detrimental effects. There is no reason to put yourself at such risk, especially when you know how outclassed you are. All you'll be doing is risking your health for your pride. Shut up you bastard. I'm going to tear you apart for what you've done to Akamaru. I could have done much worse, 
He coolly replied as he watched Kiba gulp down another pill, if he had stayed down the first time, he wouldn't be in the position he's in now. Trust me, I take no pleasure from injuring a helpless animal, but if you continue, I'll be happy to add another limp body to the floor. We'll just see about that. Kiba shouted as he raced towards Niji. Gitsuga. He cried out, spinning as hard as he could with his good arm. Niji calmly stepped back from Akamaru and twisted out of harm's way at the last second. Just as Kiba passed by, Niji whipped out his hand and gripped Kiba's oversized hoodie at the back of his neck. Grinding to a rapid halt, Niji continued his motion and slammed Kiba into the floor. Not giving him a second to recover, Niji was swiftly upon him. His fingers painfully darting across his arms and legs closing whatever tenketsu that were left open. Niji brushed off the dust that had accumulated from Kiba's impact and looked over towards Heiat. I believe we're done here. Heiat grimly nodded and raised his arm. Winner, Niji Hyuga. Team 7 was quiet as they watched Kiba and Akamaru carted off towards the infirmary. So that's why Hinata has always seemed so afraid of Niji. That guy's is ridiculous. Sasuke thought as he watched Niji head back towards the stairs. Hinata wasn't visibly shaking, but Kakashi could tell from her eyes that she was terrified of even the possibility of being in Kiba's position against her cousin. Yet, he noticed something else. She felt pity and remorse. As he watched her eyes follow her cousin up the stairs, the old memory of the Hyuga incident clicked in his mind. So, you're still carrying that weight on your shoulders? He internally sighed as he stepped next to his student. Excellent work Niji, if a little harsh at times, Guy commented as Niji retook his place by his side. The fool wouldn't stay down. If he wanted to walk away with fewer injuries, he had plenty of opportunities to do so. That is true, and I'm not criticizing your actions during the match. However, you could have ended that much sooner than you did. Niji scoffed and finally caught sight of Naruto, who had been staring at him since he arrived. Got something to say, Uzumaki? Naruto shook his head. I won't defend Kiba for being stubborn, but I don't like it when people beat up on my friends. Then find stronger friends, Niji replied as he crossed his arms, if that slacker was truly destined to move past this point, then he would have. Today, fate favored my victory. That's stupid. I don't believe in fate. We make our own paths. No one else. Ichin. Then he should have worked harder to push his path past mine. Only those with a will strong enough are able to get ahead in this life, he finished his sentence and seemed to fix his glare on Hinata. Naruto was about to retort again, but he felt a tugging on his sleeve and looked back to see Hinata trying to pull him away from the argument. He relented at the sight, but sent Niji one last glare before turn walked over to Sasuke's right, away from Niji. That guy just drives me crazy. I hope we meet in the next round. I can't wait to wipe that smug look off his face, Naruto angrily muttered as he leaned against the rail. Maybe you'll get the chance, but cool off first. You could be coming up soon, and you'll need a level head, Kakashi commented as he placed a hand on Naruto's shoulder. Naruto huffed and took a deep breath, before nodding to Kakashi that he was good. Kakashi nodded and walked over to his right, and fell in line next to Hinata. Thank you for doing that. The last thing we need is Naruto disqualifying himself before his match, he whispered. It was no problem, sensei. I would just prefer it if none us had to fight, she whispered as she began twiddling her thumbs. There's the tick again, Kakashi internally sighed as he watched his student subvert into her old habit. It had been weeks since he had last seen her do it, and he had hoped they had expelled it from her system. After taking in his students, Kakashi had made it his personal mission to help them overcome their greatest, internal challenges. For the boys it was easier. Naruto needed the support and acceptance from a group of people that genuinely cared for him, and his team and Irika were happy to fill that void. Sasuke was slightly harder, but the boy had already come to him of his own accord, asking how to better control his emotions. All three of them had faced years of psychological damage, but Hinata was the trickiest. When he had first met her, her entire personality simply screamed submission. From the way she would avert her eyes to her desperate attempts to please others, she had made astounding progress, and all three of them rubbed off on each other in fantastic ways. Whenever she was alone with her team, her confidence was at an all-time high, so it was disheartening to see how fast it could revert into her old behavior. If she was ever going to fully come out of her shell, there were three things she was going to have to face, her father, her cousin, and Naruto. Oh, he was not looking forward to that. Kakashi could feel the migraine that would form when that day decided to rear its ugly head. He had gone through the ups and downs of romantic angst enough during his time with his own team. 
If he reciprocated her feelings, great. If he rejected them, great. Kakashi sighed as he watched Naruto fuss once again about Hinata's injuries from her match. He would get so close to her face, he was worried the poor girl was going to pass out. Sasuke would silently watch the two interact, before yanking the blonde by his collar and chastise him for bothering the girl. Then there was the question of how he would react. Excuse me, Lady Hyuga. The voice shook him from his thoughts, and the team turned to face the blonde-haired boy from the Kumo team. I thought I would come over and congratulate you. Your performance was quite spectacular, and might I say, you are even more lovely up close. Hinata turned red at the compliment but smiled and bowed her head. Oh, um thank you. And you are, J. J. Oshiro, and I am always at your service, he smirked as a whipped out a yellow rose almost from nowhere. Hinata turned an even brighter shade of red, but took the flower with a stammering thank you. Sasuke frowned at the interaction, and Naruto was fed up with it. All right, all right wise guy. Is that all? He said as he stepping between them. And I thought you Kanoha ninja were supposed to be the ones preaching about cooperation between villages. What's wrong with trying to get to know someone better? Naruto glanced over his shoulder and stared across the hall at the identical rose, sitting on the ground next to the Suna girl's feet. Raiyite, he drawled out as he raised an eyebrow. The cocky expression of the brunette's face changed to a more apologetic look. By the way, I also came over here to thank you for offering your assistance to our team during the second exam. I wanted to apologize for my teammate's rude behavior toward your shadow clone. Naruto expression shifted and his gaze softened. Nah, it's alright. I get it. You didn't know me, and we were in the middle of an exam. No harm, no foul. What happened to your teammate? Is he okay? I noticed he wasn't with you guys. Jay winced as he took off his hat and rubbed the back of his head. Ko is doing better. It's a little disappointing what really happened. We were making our way through the forest, when Ko startled an animal from the impact of his landing. The thing launched a volley of spikes that skewered his leg. It's not going to be serious, but it prevented him from competing in the preliminaries. I'm sorry. Damn. If only I had been a bit smarter, I should have approached you guys more carefully. I could have led you to Hinata-chan, and she could have helped. Nah, it's fine. EHL probably would have done the same thing, even if you had offered your help. He's not a very trusting guy. Besides, as talented as she may be, it was better we got him to the tower as fast as we did. He reached into his pouch and pulled out a white, spiked barb. This here's the culprit. See this? He asked as he ran his finger along the serrated edge. This thing isn't designed to come out easily. It's meant to be nightmare going in, but absolute hell coming out. Even Niji winced at the thought of being struck with, not one, but several of those barbs. Jay sighed as he placed the barb back in his bag. K.O.'s a trooper. Thanks to your doctors he'll be back on his feet in no time. He was adamant that he'll stay for the finals. He wouldn't miss it for the world. I'm glad he's okay. Tell him that I hope he gets well soon, Hinata said. In a heartbeat, Jay's expression shifted back to his earlier look. Oh, I'll be sure to. Don't you worry. All sympathy he had for the guy drained away immediately, as Naruto growled at the interaction. If you all are done, you just missed the last match, Niji coldly said, turning their attention back to the floor. Chuji slumped to the ground, as Dosu loomed over his unconscious body. That's a shame, Jay lamented, I like that guy. He was very pleasant, when we talked before entering the forest. Now there's a guy who loves to eat. They all watched as Shikamaru helped Chuji to his feet. It's okay Chuji. You did your best. Ino called out, as Shikamaru helped his friend up the stairs. Alright, now who's next? Naruto asked as his excitement returned, only to fall again as his name failed to show up on the board. Would Kankuro and Gara please come down to the floor? Hey 8 called out, as Hinata patted Naruto's back. There's no need. I forfeit, Kankuro called out, surprising everyone in the room. You sure? Hey 8 asked with a raised eyebrow. I'm sure, was his only response as he folded his arms and leaned against the wall. All right then, your call, Hei8 said before declaring Gara the victor. Well that was rather dull. Who just gives up without even trying? Jay said crossing his arms. No, he was smart. He would know better than anyone how dangerous that guy is, Naruto said garnering the attention of everyone present. What do you mean? Kakashi asked. I ran into that guy in the forest. 
Air, well my clones did. That guy wiped all of them out within seconds. We're lucky it was only the clones that cross his path, Naruto said as he stared across the room at the red-haired boy. What did he do? Kakashi asked. He crushed them all. In seconds, and I mean literally crushed. He destroyed them all with sand. Jay was silent as he too stared at the boy. So that Garagai really does live up to his reputation. I guess the rakage was right after all. Kakashi was also silent as he stored that information for later. Would Sakura Haruno and Ino Yamanaka please make your way to the floor, Hei called out. All right. Finally. Ino exclaimed as he made her way towards the stairs. Oh this should be good, Sasuke scoffed as leaned against the railing. Why? Are they very skilled? Jay asked. No, not at all, Sasuke scoffed as he placed his face in his palm. Hinata knocked his hand from under him, and shot him a disappointed look. You'll be surprised. I've met with Sakura a few times since we're assigned our teams, and she's been taking her training very seriously. I'll believe it when I see it, Sasuke replied as he straightened his back and stared down at the floor. Are you ready forehead girl? I've been looking forward to this, Ino said with a cocky smile as she stood opposite from her old best friend. So have I, but I'm sorry to say you're not going to like what's about to happen. Sakura replied as she slipped into the new stance Karinai had been drilling into her head since day one. Alright, if both competitors are ready, then you may begin. Without delay, Ino launched herself towards Sakura. She reared her fist back and took aim right for her face. Sakura was patient and waited until the last second, before she knocked the punch away with her left hand and smacked Ino in the face with the knuckles of her right hand. Ino stumbled slightly, but returned with renewed vigor. She grunted with each strike, growing more aggravated as Sakura silently dodged and knocked away every incoming punch. After extending her punch too far, Sakura lashed out and caught hold of Ino's wrist before delivering a solid hit straight to her jaw. Ino stumbled away from her, holding her jaw in her hands. Lucky punch, she quietly said as she rotated her chin. Not luck. This is the result of all the hard work I've been putting in, Sakura replied as she returned to her starting stance, I'm done being the weak one, even if you aren't. Ino growled and she lunged forward and fired a punch straight towards her chest. Ino's eyes widened in horror, as her fist seemed to fly straight through Sakura's chest. WH. What? Sakura smirked as she delivered a blow to both of Ino's ears, disorienting her. As Ino stumbled away, the Sakura in front of her melted away into the air. Immediately, another Sakura shot up from her right and delivered a punch straight to her face, sending Ino flying back. Ino slid along the ground, before she wobbled to her feet. What the hell was that? Sakura smirked as she held up her arm. Like I said. This is the result of all my hard work. Karina sensei took time with me after training to drill home everything. Better taijutsu, better stamina, and most importantly. She waved her arm, and as it moved, multiple arms would appear in the last spot the front arm had been. Genjutsu. It seems I have quite the talent for it, Ino pig. Sakura finished as she waved her massive hands and wiggled her fingers at her. Ino, I want to thank you for everything you did for me at the academy. You taught me to stand up for myself and be proud of who I am. However, I am not the same little girl you stood up for on the playground. I am a kunoichi. With that, the multiple arms disappeared, and Sakura shot off towards Ino. Ino reached up to block the first punch, only for her hand to slip right through the oncoming fist to her face. Instead, she wheezed as Sakura nailed her in the gut before delivering a kick to her side. This is really not good, Ino thought as she reached into her bag and threw down a smoke bomb. Sakura stopped and simply watched as the cloud enveloped her friend. That wasn't the best idea, Jay commented as he crossed his arms, Blondie just made things all the more easier for the paint-haired one. Ino quietly crept through the smoke, trying to put some distance away from Sakura. I wouldn't have done that if I were you, a voice whispered behind her back, sending chills up her spine. She spun around to find nothing behind her. Sweat dripped down her brow as she heard a rustling sound, and whipped around to find nothing again. Ino, you are in my world now, and here, I control everything, Sakura's voice taunted as the smoke began to shift and turn black. Ino squealed as several sets of yellow eyes began lighting up in the smoke and hissing at her. This is not real. This is not real. This is not real, she repeated to herself as she closed her eyes. Real. That's all perspective. How real does this feel? Sakura's voice called out as the floor shook. Ino's eyes shot open and she gasped by the sight before her. She stumbled back as the tower form a dark figure seemed to be heading towards her in the mist. 
If this isn't real, then this probably won't hurt. Probably. Ino gulped as the massive foot of inner Sakura slammed down onto the floor, shaking her off her feet. Its massive yellow eyes bore down at her reared back its fist. I, I need to get out of here. That thing will squish me. Ino snapped her fingers together and tried her best to start molding chakra. It's not real. It's not real. It's not real. Release. She cried out just as the Goliath's massive fist was about to collide with her. The black clouds snapped back to purple, and she bolted up from the ground. Her lungs cried out for air, as she took a deep breath of nothing but smoke. She took a running start and leaped out of the smoke, only to find Sakura sailing towards her midair with her fist cocked. Ino didn't have the time or energy as Sakura slammed her fist into her, sending her flying back with a loud shinaro. Ino smacked against the concrete wall and fell to the floor with a thud. After several seconds, Hei called out, Ino Yamanaka is unable to continue. The winner is Sakura Haruno. Sakura's smile lit up her face as she turned and waved at her sensei. Kurinai mirrored her smile, and tried not to shoot Asuma a look as her heart swelled up with pride. I hate it when she gets like that, Shino commented, as he lightly clapped, it can be so distressing. I'm sure Kiba still has nightmares from her little tests. You're just still upset that she forced you to think you were being chased by an anteater. Shino shot his sensei a sharp look under his glasses, but remained silent on the matter. After bowing to her sensei, a look of concern crept across her face as she jogged over to her friend. Hey! Are you okay? She asked as she knelt down by her side. And not really. I can't get up, Ino winced as she tried to raise herself up. Sakura's eyes softened and she lifted Ino's arm over her shoulder and lifted her up. Come on. Let's get you to the medical bay so they can patch you up. Ino wanted to argue with her, but remained silent and simply nodded. As they slowly made their way across the room Ino couldn't help but take quick glances at her old friend, who was carrying her as if their spat had never even happened. Wow. You really have grown up. I can't believe I'm a little jealous, but, in a weird way, I'm proud of you. Sakura felt her gaze and shot her a curious look. Ino got flustered and quickly glanced away causing Sakura to simply smile as they made their way down the corridor with the help of the medical team. See? I told you, Hinata said crossing her arms and shooting Sasuke a knowing smile. All right, all right. You were right. I owe her an apology. She really has gotten better. That was some impressive genjutsu work, if I may say so myself, Jay said as a big smile lit up his face. Kakashi chuckled as he watched Sasuke slightly buckle under Hinata's stare. Now that is the confident young lady I'm used to seeing. Now, with that out of the way, who's next? Kakashi asked drawing their attention to the board once more. Come one already. I'm tired of waiting. Naruto exclaimed as he watched the yellow letters fly across the screen. J. Oshiro vs. Watan Yuchiro. A. Akichich Naruto cried out, before he crouched next to the wall and had a little sob. Stop it, you idiot. You're making an embarrassment of yourself and us, Sasuke groaned as he pinched his forehead. Says you. You were the first to go. You didn't have to wait at all, Naruto cried out through crocodile tears. Jay clapped and rubbed his hands together. Welp. That's my cue. It's been nice meeting you all. He turned and offered a deep bow to both Guy and Kakashi. Sensei. He turned to Hinata and offered her a bow, while tipping his hat, Lady Hinata which caused Naruto to send him a glare. He smirked and sent him a wink before jumping over the railing onto the floor. The last genin from Waterfall took his time going down the stairs, and took a few minutes stretching before the match began. Even the loudmouth got to go before me. Why does the universe hate me? Naruto sobbed as he smacked his head against the rail. Naruto! Please show a little more decorum. We do have foreign visitors here. Besides, this is going to be the first time you'll really get to see a shinobi from Kyomo in action, Kakashi said. Naruto nodded and placed his head in his hands as he lazily watched the match. To be honest, he was really droning it out. Jay danced backwards around the field with his opponent hot his tail, all the while with his hands stuffed in his pockets. He would just never shut up, and kept taunting his opponent, causing him to grow more and more frustrated in his pursuit of the smart-mouthed Jenin. Naruto let his eyes wander the balconies as he looked to see who was left. As he gazed over the competitors, he started to realize there was almost no one left. Was he really going to be the last match? Shut up! Wetan cried as he reared his sword above his head to bear down on Jay. Instantly, 
he pivoted on the ball of his foot and surged forward. He planted his knee into his opponent's stomach, knocking the wind out of him. He snatched the boy's katana straight out of his hands, and slammed its handle straight into the boy's forehead. Wetan crumpled to the ground in a heap, with Jay planting a foot on his back, all the while, spinning the boy's katana in his hands. And the victor is Jay, Hayate called out before going into another coughing fit. At this point, Naruto had shot up and was counting everyone again. There had to be someone he had missed. There were only 24 of them. There shouldn't have been an odd one out. As his eyes scanned over the room, it suddenly dawned on him who was the only person left beside himself. The scoreboard lit up in bright yellow letters, and displayed the final two names. As his eyes glossed across the name across from his, he felt his heart light on fire with excitement and he turned to match the grin of his opponent. Naruto Uzumaki vs Rock Lee Chapter 38, The Preliminaries, Part 3 Both boys shared a smirk, before leaping over the railing and falling to the floor. Well they're certainly ready to get started, Kakashi commented dryly. Yosh! This is perfect, my eternal rival. Now we shall get to see the fruits of our labor pitted against one another, proving whose teaching method is truly superior. Ha, huh, did you say something guy? Niji sighed at his sensei's antics, and tried to ignore the man as he griped about his rival's coolness. He glanced down at the navy and green blurs jogging their way towards their starting positions and scoffed. Hurry up and finish this, Lee. The sooner this is over, the sooner we can begin training for the finals. We'll need all the time we can get, he thought as he glanced over at Sasuke and Gara. Then again, he thought as the corner of his lip began to twitch upwards, it should be entertaining to watch Uzumaki being tossed around. Neither opponent could wipe the grins from their faces as they stared each other down. I have been looking forward to this, Naruto Kuen. I am sure you will prove to be a fierce opponent. Lee said as he slipped into his signature stance. Same here. I hope what my team said about you wasn't all talk because this is going to be awesome, Naruto chirply replied as he bounced on the balls of his feet. Come on. We're ready when you are, he shouted towards the ref who simply sighed in annoyance. If both opponents are prepared, then you may begin, he droned as he brought down his hand. Both genin shot off in a blur and collided in the center of the arena. Neither dropped their smile, even as Lee delivered the first punch straight into Naruto's face. They darted around the arena, clashing and trading blows, with Naruto mostly being forced on the defensive under Lee's fierce barrage of punches. Naruto's eyes lit up as he spied an opening, and shot a punch at his gut. He was shocked as Lee's hand quickly shot down and caught his hand, before he raised his leg higher than Naruto could stretch and nailed him in the head. Naruto stumbled back, and shook his head to clear the disorientation. Naruto glanced back at Lee, who had slid back to his original stance, and couldn't help but smile. This was great, he took a deep breath and launched himself at his green-clad opponent once again. Just as I thought, Kakashi muttered. What's wrong sensei? Hinata asked. Sasuke, when we first started training together, why did Naruto always lose to you in a spar? The dobe may still be faster than me, but his technique at the time was just atrocious. He could move, I'll give him that, but his style was incredibly sloppy. Agreed. You two were able to stay around equal footing because you each outperformed each other in one area or another. As his technique improved, it was harder for you to predict his moves, until you obtained your Sharingan that is. Lee is a different story. Here we have an opponent, who beats Naruto in speed and even outshines you in Taijutsu finesse. He crossed his arms as he stared down at the two. Neither of them was willing to back down as they clashed once again. Naruto has gotten better, don't get me wrong, but if he's still having trouble with you, Sasuke, it's hard for me to see how he'll be able to best Lee in Taijutsu. No sooner than the words left his mouth, Naruto blocked Lee's most recent barrage of blows and smacked a clean hit straight into Lee's cheek, causing Kakashi to raise an eyebrow. Lee shrugged off the blow and came at him with renewed vigor. The two traded punches once again, with Naruto mostly on the defensive, until he reached up and caught Lee's right hook in his left hand, and bashed the outside of his knuckles into Lee's left cheek. Kakashi narrowed his eyes as he leaned forward. Something was off here, but he just couldn't place it. It took him a while to realize it, but as Naruto got more and more hits in, Kakashi realized Lee was getting slower. It was gradual, but there was a definitely a difference compared to how he was performing at the beginning of the match. Naruto ran forward and jumped up. He brought down his leg, which Lee was able to block by crossing his arms. Naruto twisted as he fell and pushed off the ground with his hands. He spun around with a clear right hook, 
But Li was still unable to block the incoming punch. How is he doing it? Sasuke murmured. I'm curious as well. Your thoughts, Guy? Kakashi asked as everyone turned to him. Guy was silent. His focus was sharp, and his eyes never left the two as he watched them dance around each other. This was the serious side of Guy that Kakashi appreciated when they were on missions. As ridiculous as Guy could act, he wasn't renowned as the Taijutsu master of Kanoha for nothing. Watch closely in their next encounter. It will be about four seconds into their next exchange. The group anxiously watched as Lee and Naruto clashed again. Their game had become a much more even display of ability, as Naruto and Lee were both being forced on the defensive. Just as Naruto bobbed his head out the way of Lee's fist, his left hand shot up and gently tapped Lee's elbow, before he was forced to block Lee's upcoming hit. Did you see it? Guy asked. There it is, Kakashi replied. He noticed Sasuke confused glanced and tapped at his headband. Activate your Sharingan. You should see it clear as day. Sasuke was confused, but he went along anyway. You too Miss Hinata, Niji. Your Byakugan should allow you to see it as well. The Hyuga cousins were surprised, but both activated their Byakugan out of curiosity. As the three Dojitsu users observed the two boys, they each noticed several, glowing dots scattered along Lee's arms and legs. Are those, seals? Hinata gasped. Indeed. Gravity seals if I had to guess, Guy replied, your teammate is slowly, but surely, reducing Lee's speed with every encounter. I believe it's happening too quickly for him to truly alter the intensity of the seal, but his plan is working. Very clever, Dobe, Sasuke smirked as he watched Lee kick off and do several backflips away from his opponent. Naruto Kuen truly is a worthy opponent. I do not understand how he is doing it, but I could be worn down faster than I should be. What is he up to? Naruto smiled in satisfaction from his last hit to Lee's shoulder. That wasn't to say he was without his own scratches. His cheek was swelling from a particularly nasty hit, but his smile never left his face. He could now tell what Sasuke and Hinata had been talking about. The guy was a beast. He easily outranked him in speed, and his taijutsu ability was on another level. Thank you, Jiraiya-sensei. Marking makes things so much easier. Ever since they had their little lesson, applying fuenjutsu in combat had become a breeze. Now it was like Hinata-chan's technique, where all he would need was a simple touch. Of course, he didn't want to hurt the guy too badly. If the gravity seals were too harsh, they could end up crushing his bones, or the guy could injure himself in a struggle to stand up. This may have been a competition, but this guy was a fellow shinobi of Kanoha and a friend to Sasuke and Hinata. Besides, the guy had truly seemed sincere about helping them in the forest. He couldn't hold that against him. No, that irritation was reserved for Niji. All right Lee, how much longer can you keep this up? Cause I'm having a blast. Naruto called out. Lee shot him a smile in return, and fought to raise his arms back to his starting position. I don't know what you are doing to me, Naruto Kuen, but I will overcome it. I shall fight as long as there is breath in my chest. Naruto's smile grew even wider. Time for round two. He got ready to shot off, but was surprised when Guy called out from the balcony. All right, Lee. I think it's time that you took them off. Sasuke and Hinata sent him a confused look, and Lee's face was full of shock. Ah really, Guy-sensei? But I thought you said that was for emergencies only. Yeah, I did. But this is an exception. Guy gave him a thumbs up and flashed his teeth. Go ahead and show him what you got. Ah really? Really? Lee exclaimed as a bright smile crept to his face. Naruto was still confused as he watched Lee squat on the ground and begin lifting up his leg warmers. His confusion turned to surprise as Lee unraveled several bindings from his legs. Are those? How old-fashioned, Shikamura droned. Ah. That feels so much better. Now I can move freely. Naruto squinted his eyes as he made out the symbols on the weights. His eyes shot open as he recognized the insignia of the seals. What the hell? Those are dash. Tamari smirked as she watched the green-clad boy drop the weights from his hands. Does he really expect to make that much of a difference by dropping a few pounds of weighed dash? Everyone's jaw hit the floor as the impact shook the floor, sending a cloud of dust into the air. What the hell? Sasuke exclaimed. Guy, you are too much, Kakashi sighed. Naruto gulped as he recognized the level of gravity seals decorating each piece of metal. That's, that's over 50 pounds each. And he was still this fast. 
Naruto felt a sinking feeling in his gut as he realized how much trouble he was really in. Lee held a more mischievous look on his face as he bounced around, adjusting to his new weight. Are you ready to proceed, Naruto Kuen? Honestly, I think I may need a minute, he muttered before he blinked and Lee sent him flying backwards several feet. I didn't even see him move. That just insa. He couldn't even finish his thought as he felt Lee plant his foot into his back, sending him hurtling back the way he had came. No time to think, Naruto thought as he reached into his pouch for the first kunai he could find. He could feel Lee dashing toward him, and blindly slashed out with his kunai. Lee came to a screeching halt, and knocked his hand so hard that he dropped his kunai. In the time that the kunai had barely fallen three inches, Lee landed a short punch to Naruto's ribs. Naruto grit his teeth and growled, as he grabbed hold of Lee's other hand. Lee slightly paused and was shocked as he stared into Naruto's eyes. Slanted pupils stared straight back at Lee's pitch black eyes, before glancing at something in between them. Naruto raised his foot and ignored the pain as he kicked the fallen kunai back up towards Lee's face. Lee was easily able to knock the boy away, and managed to escape the path of the kunai with only a scratch. It continued along its path and lodged itself into the ceiling. He didn't know what Naruto had just done, but he did not want to give him a chance to do it again. Lee shot off and easily ducked under Naruto's guard, delivering three rapid hits into his stomach and one in his cheek. Naruto was sent flying backward and rolled like a ragdoll across the ground. Lee paused as he watched the blonde cough several times, before shakily rising to his feet. If your injuries are too severe, I regretfully suggest that you surrender Naruto Koen. I don't want to have to hurt you any more than I have to. Naruto weakly laughed and Sly grinned back at him. His slanted eyes and whisker marks truly helped accent his devious look. Sorry to tell you this, but I don't exactly know how to quit. Lee smiled lightly before getting ready to charge again. Naruto crossed his fingers together and shouted, Kage Bunshin no Jutsu. Lee paused as the whole room went up in smoke, and was surprised as he was met with a sea of blonde hair and navy shirts staring back at him. Lee stared back at the horde of Cheshire grins, and his own smile grew even wider. The original Naruto smirked as he shouted, let's play a game of needle in the haystack. Except this time, the haystack is also fighting back. Boys, sick M. Yes sir. The crowd echoed as Naruto leaped back behind the front lines. As one, the crowd charged at Lee, who remained planted in his spot, content to let them come to him. To say it was disorienting for everyone watching would be an understatement, it was like watching a hive of insects swarming around its prey. There was so much sensory overload that Sasuke had to turn off his Sharingan. There was just so much going on that it was giving him a headache to try and keep track of it all. Lee remained cool and confident, and proceeded to decimate every wave that descended upon him. All it would take was a quick jab or sharp kick to send each clone back to their master. As he dismantled the incoming clones, his eyes scanned the back rows for the original searching for the one, who seemed to be standing still and observing. There you are. Lee shot off sending clones flying in his wake as he tore after the Naruto in the back to his right. The blonde's eyes widened as he descended upon him, and just as his fist was about to make contact, he substituted with another clone and reappeared on the other side of the arena. And this is how their game continued to play out. Naruto would summon wave after wave of five clones at a time, to take on Lee, who would dismantle them and slowly reduce the size of the crowd. As time went on, Lee was starting to slow down, which gave each clone the opportunity they were waiting for. Just as before, all would take is a gentle tap, and he would be tagged with a gravity seal. Once again, Lee began to feel himself getting slowed down. The clones were starting to get lucky with their hits and they were tiring him out. I apologize, Naruto Kuen, but it seems you are giving me little choice. Naruto smirked as he saw Lee coming to an abrupt stop. Now is my chance. He summoned another clone and quickly dispelled it, signaling all of the clones to converge on Lee at once. The massive clones halted their courses, and all jumped at him at once. Just as they were about to reach him, there was an explosion of light and a cry shouting, Fifth gate, open. Every clone within a ten-foot radius of Lee went up in smoke from the shockwave alone, stunning the seven clones and original off to the side. They stood in silence and awe as Lee reappeared from the blinding light. His eyes had changed to a bright white and his skin was bright red. Steam poured off from his face and arms, as he struggled to contain the overwhelming energy. That is not good, Kakashi said, as he turned around glared at Guy. What's going on sensei? Hinata asked. Kakashi ignored her as he and Guy locked eyes. You actually taught a genin how to open the inner gates? Guy, you should know better than that. Yes, I did, Guy coolly replied, Lee was aware of the risks, 
and he was ready for it. Besides, he doesn't know how to open them fully. There is a level of maturity and ability that he must reach first. What do you two mean? Sasuke chimed in, tired of waiting for answers. It means. Naruto is about to be in for a world of hurt, Kakashi replied as they looked down in the arena. This guy is just ridiculous. Naruto had never trained to be a sensor, but even he could feel the raw amount of chakra that was pumping through Lee's body. This is not good. I need to think of something fast. What can I d-dash? He was cut off as Lee tore through his final line of clones. Found you. He exclaimed as he launched Naruto into the air. Naruto opened his mouth to scream, but nothing came out as the wind was knocked out of his lungs. Wind stung his face as he catapulted towards the ceiling. He barely had time to breath before he was launched yet again, back towards the ground, by another painful kick. And then another. And another. Lee tossed him around the air like a human pinball machine. Knocking him back and forward. Disappearing only to reappear and launch him another direction. Naruto had no time to think. No time to move. He could only endure the pain, as he was volleyed through the air. It's time. Lee thought as he began to loosen the bindings around his hand. I was hoping to save this for you, Niji, but it seems I'm going to have to use it now. Lee launched Naruto one last time straight up in the air, before kicking off right behind him. Lee's bindings began moving as if they had a mind of their own, and began to wrap around Naruto's body until all movement was restricted. Lee grabbed hold of his sides and began spinning as they made their descent towards the ground. Primary Lotus. Naruto Kuen. Come on Dobe. Do something. Naruto closed his eyes and reached out for something, anything he could use. A familiar, bright sensation echoed through his head, and his eyes shot open. Lee continued his path towards the ground, and just before the impact, he felt his grip on his opponent disappear entirely. Lee slammed into the ground, sending concrete flying as a result of the massive crater. Everyone was quiet as they waited to see who would emerge first. As the dust began to settle, they could hear Lee cry out in pain as he struggled to stand up. Ignoring the aching pain all over his body, Lee reached up with his hand and tried to drag himself out of the crater. At the center of the indention was a pile of bandages, with Naruto nowhere to be seen. Where did he go? Ino exclaimed as they began scouring the room. A violent gagging sound caught everyone's attention as a splash of a green and red liquid splattered to the ground from the ceiling. Everyone raised their heads and was shocked to see Naruto crouching upside down on the roof of the room. In his right hand, he clutched the strangely shaped kunai he had launched into the ceiling earlier in the match. How did he? That doesn't make any sense, Shikamaru thought as he narrowed his eyes. He caught sight of the strange design on the kunai before glancing back at Naruto, who was trying his best not to fall from the ceiling. What did Naruto just do? Hinata let out a sigh of relief as she watched Naruto carefully drop down from the ceiling and stumble to the floor. That had been too close. I don't know if he somehow planned that, but that was an excellent move. If he hadn't used the Hiration, I don't want to think about the state he'd be in right now, Kakashi thought as he watched his student struggle onto his arms and legs. How did he do it? How did he escape? Niji thought as he leaned against the rail. He didn't know when had grown so invested in this match, but now he couldn't peel his eyes away. Please make the room stop spinning, Naruto mumbled as he held a hand over his mouth. His whole body felt like hell. Besides the aching pain from being a human punching bag, the whole world wouldn't stop shaking as he desperately attempted to reorient himself. He clutched his stomach as the trace amounts of Kyubi chakra circulating in his system began repairing the damage to his stomach. Thanks, I guess, you stupid fox. His attention was disrupted as he saw Lee drag himself out from his crater. Without Naruto, Lee had taken the full brunt of his own attack. He clutched his left arm to his side, and Naruto winced as he saw what condition it was in. From how it hung limply at his side and the angle it was twisted, his arm was clearly broken. Despite his injuries, Lee still seemed to be in better condition than he was. Naruto could barely stand, let alone move. His entire body felt like he'd been trampled over by a horde of oxen. Lee panted as he raised his head and glared at his opponent. Naruto gulped as he saw the irritation growing in those blank eyes. Oh, I'm in trouble. Lee never seemed like a scary guy, but with that expression and his red, steaming skin contrasting against his white eyes, he was downright terrifying. He crouched down and began sprinting towards Naruto as fast as he could. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Naruto's eyes shot open, and he clasped his hands together. 
As Li rocketed towards him, he slammed his hands to the ground. Upon contact, black markings began to appear. As Kanji spread out around him, he looked up to see Li's fist inches from his face. The world seemed to stop as he watched the fist grow closer and closer. With the few milliseconds of time he had left, his mind had one simple thought, activate. At once, the black markings glowed white and sprung to life. Li's fist crashed into a wall, as Naruto was enveloped in a blue cube. Naruto let out a sigh of relief and fell back on his butt. Barrier seal, complete, he sighed as he glanced up at Li. That ought to hold him off for a while. Li took a few seconds to stare at the barrier before lifting his good arm back and slamming it down with all his might. Or not, Naruto gulped as he watched cracks begin to appear on its surface. He crawled back onto his hands and knees and clasped his hands over the seal. As Li continued to wail on its walls, Naruto fought with every ounce of his concentration to keep up his barrier. This isn't going to last me forever. I need a plan. He opened an eye and glanced up at Li, who continued to swing at the barrier, chipping away at it with each blow. Naruto squinted his eyes as he noticed the massive amount of steam that was now trailing from Li's body. He could literally see the sweat dripping down Li's face evaporating after coming in contact with his burning skin. A light bulb seemed to go off in his head. All that work he's been doing has got to eat up a lot of energy. He eyes the barrier around him, as his plan started falling into place. He's got something, Sasuke muttered as he anxiously watched the match with his Sharingan. How can you tell? Hinata asked. He has that look on his face. This match is about to be decided right here. How are you so sure? He's going to have to lower that barrier to confront Lee. If Lee can get to him before he can enact his plan, he's finished. Hinata was silent as she watched Naruto get ready for his final plan. Naruto took a deep breath as he looked up at Lee. He had to time this just right. Just as Lee began his swing, as Lee reared back for another punch into the cracking, blue walls, Naruto exhaled and dropped the barrier. Lee stumbled forwards as the wall of chakra disappeared, and he was momentarily stunned by Naruto's choice. Naruto mustered as much energy as he could, and quickly jumped backwards. Lee was quick to catch himself, and prepared to shoot after him. As his legs pushed off of the ground, Naruto raised his hands in another hand sign. He watched as Lee yet again rocketed towards him with his fist outstretched and waited as long as he could. Activate! The barrier seal sprung to life again, as Lee smashed into its walls. Lee was stunned and confused as he realized he was now trapped inside Naruto's barrier. Naruto weakly chuckled as he crossed his fingers together and shouted, Kage Bunshin no Jutsu. Three puffs of smoke erupted beside him, and he shot them a confused glance. Three. I meant to call five. I must be running lower on chakra than I thought. After some inner debate, he reached into his bag and swallowed a soldier pill. Uh, did it taste nasty, but it would get the job done. He felt the swell of chakra and energy sweep through his system, and he nodded at his clones. Lee began to panic and glance back and forth between them as they started to surround the cube. In unison, each of them began running through hand signs. Lee rushed at the wall, banging as hard as he could, but he was too late, as they brought their hands to their mouths and shouted, Katan, Fox Hellfire no Jutsu. Streams of yellow fire burst from their lungs, and shot towards the cube. Lee winced as he watched the Jutsu heading towards the barrier and closed his eyes as it made impact. After several seconds, he was surprised to see that the barrier was still standing. What was he doing? So that's what he's after, Guy mused as he watched his student slam against the roof of the barrier in an attempt to free himself. Congratulations Kakashi. Your student fought a fine match. You should be proud. What do you mean, Gai-sensei? Hinata asked. This match is over. It ended the moment Naruto trapped Lee inside that barrier jutsu. If you'll notice, Lee's movements are becoming slower. Indeed, with each attempt, Lee's strikes against the ceiling of his prison became weaker and weaker. It was also getting harder to see him as steam started fogging up the barrier. Is all that steam coming from Lee's body? Sasuke asked as he started to put the pieces together. Correct, Guy replied, when Lee activates the inner gates, his body has to compensate for all the energy he is burning at once. The amount of chakra shooting through his body heats up his skin exponentially, which causes any sweat he may form to cool himself off to evaporate immediately. Young Naruto is effectively sweating him out. The more Lee tries to escape, the more energy and water he expends, and let's not forget he is still struggling against the gravity seals placed on him throughout the match. Naruto is going to dehydrate Lee until he doesn't have the energy to carry on. 
The genin were stunned as they watched Li's attempts grow more and more futile, until they could no longer hear the sound of him banging on the barrier. After a few more seconds to be sure, each of the clones finally cancelled their jutsu and the original cancelled the seal. The pent-up steam flooded the air, and everyone held their nose as the stench of sweat filled the room. Naruto dropped to one knee and his clones began to pop one by one. As the mist cleared, everyone could see the prone form of Lee excessively panting from his mouth. Heiate strolled up to the boy, and knelt next to his side. If you can still move, try to raise your hand. Lee winced as he tried to follow his simple instruction. He pushed as hard as he possibly could, but after everything that had happened, all stacked on top of each other, he simply didn't have the energy to do it. Heiate nodded his head and patted the boy on the shoulder. You did spectacular kid, he whispered before rising back up. Rock Lee is unable to continue. The winner is Naruto Uzumaki. A tired smile lit up his face, as Naruto found the energy to lift his arms to sky and shout, YTTA. Everyone in the room was shell-shocked as the long match final drew to a close. That was. Phenomenal. Well done, Naruto, the Hokage whispered to himself. Way to go brat. You pulled it off, Anko smirked. Despite his exhaustion, Naruto pushed his body to move and he made his way over to Lee. Lee was heavily panting as the medical team began their work on him. As he noticed Naruto drawing closer, he tried to speak, but his throat was just too dry. Don't overexert yourself. You were incredible, Naruto weakly laughed as he patted him on the shoulder. Lee weakly smiled as his eyes and skin began to change back to their regular hue. Here. Let me deactivate those gravity seals for you. Naruto brought his hands together and mouthed, release. Lee sighed as he felt the accumulated weight finally lift from his chest. Naruto noticed Lee trying to move his hand, and was surprised when the boy gave him a thumbs up. He smirked and said, when the exams are over, you better believe we are going to fight again. I'll be even stronger next time, so you better train even harder if you want to stand a chance. Lee gave him one last smile, before the medical team began moving him off towards the infirmary. Naruto Kuen. A voice called behind him. He turned around to see Sasuke and Hinata jogging towards him, with Kakashi lazily strolling in the back. That was unbelievable. You did it. She said as she slid down next to him. Even I'll admit, that was actually impressive Sasuke smirked as he stepped up beside him. Naruto shot them a grin, before his eyes began to droop. Thanks you guys, I'm going to sleep now. Good night. And with that, he face planted into the ground. That's it for part 9. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.